Hey guys, I hope you all are doing good. In today's video, I'll be talking about ISO 19650. Now you would be like, what the hell is this? This is something that is called an international BIM standard. And this is very important in international project delivery. A lot of countries are using this. USA, Canada, UK, Australia, all are using ISO 19650. And in this video, I'll be sharing my knowledge, what I understand from ISO 19650, how it is used, what are the phases of these standards, and uh, overall how it contributes in a successful BIM project delivery. So, without any delays, let's get started with the video, guys. So, what is ISO 19650? ISO 19650 is a standard that provides a unified framework for managing information over the entire life cycle of a built asset using BIM. Of course, this is now more complicated, but I will just simply break it down for you. It's a standard. There are a set of standards that is mentioned in ISO 19650 and once a model is built or once a project has been commenced or started these standards govern how the information in that entire project environment will flow who will be the lead architect or the bim manager how the data will go to the consultants how consultants will view that data use that data share that data every information will be mentioned in iso 19650 essentially it offers a set of guidelines that standardize how we work with bim data from design phase to construction into operations and before iso 19650 different countries had their own standards for example uk was using pas 1192 while other regions were having their own approaches like uh australia had their own approach us was using their own standards and own approach but iso 19650 unifies all the standards from all across the world and makes it so simple for any country or any region to use it on their own project which is the best part of this international standards and this is the reason why internationally firms are using this standards ISO 19650 has multiple parts but the most essential parts are part 1 and part 2 so part 1 has these following aspects first is terms and definitions definition of information requirement and resulting information model delivery team capabilities and capacity which becomes very important in long run because you sometimes overpromise or promise to deliver something that you can't which is very important to highlight that okay we have these capabilities and we can deliver these then assets and project information perspectives and collaborative working then delivery cycle then we have collaborative working then we have project and asset information management uh, functions information delivery planning management managing the collaborative production of information and common data environment workflow only the workflow is decided in part 1 now we have part 2 of iso 19650 which deals with delivery phases of the asset first is information management during the delivery phase of the asset second is the process which we will follow during the delivery phase of an asset then we have the bim execution plan I have made a dedicated separate video explaining what is BIM execution plan and how it becomes very important in a BIM delivery project or a BIM delivery phase. Now we have part 3 of ISO 19650. This deals with the operational phase of an asset. So how the information will be managed, how the information will be delivered at the operational phase of an asset. and how what kind of processes will be followed so basically this mainly mainly and majorly focuses on common data environment so we call a uh, cde or cdm so uh, common data environments are basically uh, your servers or your cloud or 
any place where you will collect all this information you will save all this information where the central model will be accessible to all the consultants clients and all the stakeholders of that project so in this way you will know how the data will flow out during the operational or the uh, like final construction phases or delivery phases of a project so this phase also becomes very important in the entire iso 19650 and when you go to part four and five where four is focusing more on information exchanges how the transactions will happen how the information will flow from one consultant to the other and then to the developer and client and the part five of ISO 19650 focuses on security. So basically why you need security when you are working on CAD and it's not yet built. It's mainly for the government projects. So most of the government projects around the world are using BIM in developed countries. Again, so in developed countries, governments are using BIM to make their correctional facilities, to make their uh, courthouses, jails, to make their parliaments. So you need a very high level of security. You will know who will have access to what kind of drawings, who has the security clearance, how you will control the information that is flowing out, how you will manage who can access a certain amount of information. So these are five parts that together combined makes a BIM standard. And these standards are very, very important and crucial when we want to make a BIM project and deliver a BIM project. To further understand ISO 19650, we need to understand uh, these few terms, which are appointing party. Appointing party means the owner or the initiator of the project who owns the project, who will be providing the funding for the project. Second is lead appointing party. Lead appointing party is the project lead or the contractors basically who will be executing the project or coordinating the entire project. Then we have the task team. So task team are basically the project manager or the BIM managers. They will be managing the models. They will be managing the data of the entire project. They will have uh, another set of hands, those will be BIM coordinators who will be helping the management of the project. And then we have the information manager. So uh, information manager are basically part of the task team, uh, usually in the companies over here. So what BIM managers will be doing is carrying out a thorough analysis of everything that has been done in the project or that is being done in the project they will maintain the standards of the project they will maintain the standards of the deliverables so basically i have showed you what is level one level two level three what is lod so all of these things and will be taken care by the bim managers and the information manager so guys these are the few terms and phases of iso 19650 you can go ahead and search online. I have mentioned few links also in the description of this video where you can go and learn more about ISO 19650. It took me almost a month to totally understand how things go and what is 19650. So I'm sure it, this video won't be enough to 100% explain you what is it. So that's why I urge all of you who is watching my video to go ahead in the links and research about this terminology, this uh, standards and guideline systems. And this will actually help you understand BIM better. This will help you be better than all the BIM people that are out there. This will help you be better in the field of architecture as well. You will understand a wider perspective and what is going on around the world as well. So go ahead, look up all the information that is there. And if you have any questions or doubts or any queries, please go ahead, mention it in the comment section. I will be more than happy to help you. And guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please go ahead, hit a like and subscribe. Your subscription is the only way I'm able to continue making these videos on YouTube. Life has been tough. You know, architecture is tough. So yeah. 
I just need your support and I'll try uh, and I'll try to keep the information updated as much as possible guys. So take care. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.